Now I'm just showing an unboxing of a model Trix 22941 and this is a French locomotive and it's a SNCF rail company which is the French National Railway uh, it's class 241A series and it was operated from I think it was the beginning of the 1930s through France quite a powerful loco actually it's a 482 wheel configuration and I think it was actually used to pull one of the Orient Expresses so I'm going to use this model to pull some of my Orient Express coaches which are a lot very nice I imagine so let's get out of the box and have a look yeah the packing this is newer packing from Trix um, it's a standard box I mean I was expecting something a bit more substantial than this considering the price that I paid for it but it's no problem um, here we go that's how it comes packaged in a nice box I call them so basically we just pull that out pull the locomotive out I mean they're very well packed I think this packing is very good compared to say Roco where you've got all Roco can be really awkward to get the logos back into the packaging with the details on but this I think is one of the best ways to pack a logo because it goes in easy, slots in the box, no problem. But on this new packaging from uh, Michael and Tricks, you have uh, all the information now, sl slides out. There's a little thing there where you put your finger, push your finger in there, it slides out the uh, little box underneath. That slides out like that, which is very nice. So you don't have to pull it out the old fashioned way. And inside a sleeve, you get all the information. You get all the booklets and the warranty card, etc. So I really like that. I think that's a really good, a really good uh, way of doing things. Anyway, I'll put that aside. All right, so there we go. Um, that's it. exactly as it comes from the factory. I've never taken it out of the box. Got some extra pack in there. Sponge or something. We've got uh, yeah, it's, it's nicely packed. So you've got all these extra bits inside. I don't know what they are, but I'll soon find out. So to get it out, I'm going to slide it out the sleeve. Pull the sleeve out. There we go. That's nice and easy enough. Just pull it down. Then we have an extra add-on part. Looks like a part that goes. If you're having it on the display shelf, you clip that on. It's extra suspension detail about looks it or a different type of suspension detail I don't know uh, we've got some add-on hoses and we've got some uh, decals for the tender if you want to customise the tender I think and I think that's it let's uh, take it out then we pull out one of the uh, flaps carefully move it back and then you get a piece of felt and a piece of plastic underneath there, so that's really well done. So there we go, let's have a closer look at this, being very careful. Yeah, so there we go. There's tons of detail on this. Absolutely loads. Lots of areas picked out with gold. It looks really nice. Separate applied handrails all over it. Many handrails. And uh, the plate from the tender to the uh, loco is connected as it would be in real life. Right, so I'm going to get it out properly now. Yeah, the only problem I've had with this out of the box is there was a missing light housing on this left hand side, light tender light. So on the other side you get a, a nice housing and one here. There's one missing so that part is on order from the supplier where I bought it from. The shop, they said they'll order some in and send them out to me so not to worry they said. Other than that, um, 
everything else is fine. These are actually quite loose, these you can just pull them off slightly, so I don't know how it's come off, but it wasn't in the box, couldn't find it. So if you get one, make sure you've got these on the rear tender because they can come off easily. Other than that, it's superb, it's got a close connection with the tender and loco, which is adjustable as well. And the wheels, the main drive wheels move from side to side. So like articulated, as you can see there, that moves side to side. So I'll take a really tight curve without any problems whatsoever. So other than that, we're really happy with it. There we are, got it on the rails on the mobile test track. So we'll just fire it up. Um, I'm going to use the ESU programmer. Now, if we press re-decoder for this MFX decoder, which that's its first priority, uh, is MFX. But with it being a Marklin decoder, it's not going to log onto it correctly using this uh, ESU software. But it'll still work as long as you put in the address. CVs you can change them and you can actually use a test bench on the ESU programmer if you've got that. So we power that on, put the address of the loco in and everything should work. So there we go, and it's a very clear speaker. I've got it uh, turned down slightly because it's a bit loud out of the box. I've uh, also delayed the braking by quite a bit as well because I like slow braking on the locos and a longer brake squeal and obviously I've changed the address. There's other things you can do as well using manual CVs. But yeah, the uh, programming on the decoder is quite advanced. The way it's been mapped out, the coasting of the loco, the way it works and it's really good. Yeah, so when we power the loco up, we've got F0, which is lights, F1, which is a um, smoke generator, F2 is sounds, and we've got F3, which is a long main, main line whistle. And we've got F4, ABF up. Uh, sorry, ABV off, not sure what that is. F5, brakes on and off, brake squeal. F6, engineer's cab lighting. On and off. F7, which is a short whistle. F8, running gear lights. On and off. F9 blowing off steam. F10 coal being shoveled. F11, ash grate. F12, air pump. 13, here's a water pump. F14 is injector. F15 isn't on the list for some reason. F16 is station announcement. Uh, F17, rail joints when it's moving. And F18, station announcement, background ambience. F19 generator, F20 is generator with lighting, plus headlights, 
sound effect of, of water filling is F21. Coal filling is F22. And F23 sand filling. F24 is sanding. F25 safety valve. F26 is a double A switching light. Don't know what a switching light is. F27 is low speed switching range. And F28 is sound of the couplers. F29 is station announcement, F30 is conductor's whistle, can't play any of them two because the uh, functions only go up to 28 on the ESU, ECOS and uh, the, the programming software. To play beyond 28 you, you can do it on the Marklin Central Station too. We go speed step one. 